Okay, on today's iPad painting tutorial, I'm going to do some lightning effects. And then once you're familiar with that, you can add it to your own, perhaps stormy landscape scene, and you can just play around with the effect in general. So as usual, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad. This is the iPad Pro. I've opened an A4 canvas within the app. The colors that I'm using, I will provide a link in the description to this video. It's these colors. Follow the link to my Patreon page. There is a file that will be free there, as well as the hexadecimal codes which you can just type in here, the color will appear, you can drag it down into the color palette that you're creating, and yeah, you can use the exact same colors that I'm going to be using. In terms of the brushes, I'm gonna be using brushes within the airbrushing, and I'm gonna be using the soft, the medium, maybe, maybe the medium hard brush as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do on my canvas is I want to get rid of that white background. You're not gonna see lightning on a white background, obviously. We'll go to this darkest color and we'll drag it in for the background like that. On the next layer, I'm gonna move along to my other color here, which is a really lighter blue. I'm gonna to go to my brushes. May as well stay on the soft brush. Turn the size of the brush to about 10. We'll have the opacity at around 50%. And I'm just going to start creating some shapes that cut through this scene. I'm going to keep it quite textured. I really don't want to create a solid because what I'm going to do next, I'm gonna to go to my adjustments, to the Gaussian blur. I want to affect the whole layer and I just want to spread that in anyway. So I want to create some areas that are irregular. I don't want it to cut completely neatly across that scene. I'm gonna go back to this color now, and I probably will need to create another layer. And I'm gonna stick on this soft brush, but I'm gonna turn the brush size down to around 7%, turn the opacity down to around 20%, and I just want to start creating, in fact, that opacity is too high, we'll turn that down. We'll put it really quite low at 10%, see how we go with that. And we just want to create some textures around that edge. So almost like we're creating an area of wispy bits of cloud coming away from there. I can turn the size of the brush down a little bit to five and turn the opacity down to five as well. And again, I want to continue to create texture, break away elements that are coming from the edge there. I just want to interrupt that completely soft edge with some texture. Don't really need to get too bogged down in this. We are really on the low texture there and even will low opacity rather will turn the size of the brush down. I want to keep this very soft, very low opacity. If you can start to see the brush marks too much, you just need to turn the opacity down even further. So I'll put it down to 3%. This is just really a subtle effect that's going to add a little bit more complexity, a bit more depth to the background before we do the lightning effect. If you feel like it's just not gone to the right type of texture, just blur it in a little bit. Go to your Gaussian blur, affect the whole layer and just slide it across a little bit, maybe 10%. And that should start to soften in a little bit more and looks better. We'll create another layer and we'll move along our colors now to this third color in. We're going to stay on the soft airbrush and we can keep the settings as they are. So we'll keep it at relatively small brush here. We'll put it up at 4% and we'll keep it down at the 2% actually. And we'll just start to bring in an area up here, just a suggestion that there's going to be a lighter color up in this dark area. And I'm allowing it to build up very gradually. Take some areas here all the way across. Let's turn the opacity up a little bit, actually. That is difficult to see. We'll put it at 5%. And we'll just start to add a little bit more texture up in this area. It's gonna be completely blown out by some of the lighter colors. Certainly the lightning strike is really gonna make most of this not that visible anyway. But I think even then it's subtleties that might just be visible at the end once we start adding other effects. It might just bring some of them out and it's better to have a little bit of texture and life going on in the background rather than just being completely flat and a bit boring. Okay, again, if you're not entirely happy with that texture, you can always go back to your Gaussian blur on the layer, slide it in a little bit, up to again, maybe around the 10%. It just softens the impact of it. We'll create another layer. Go back to our colors. This time we're gonna go into the pink colors and we're gonna go straight for the middle pink. Keep everything the same. So 4% size, 5% opacity. And I'm gonna pick an area now in which 
we're going to have the lightning emerge from clouds. So I'm creating like the bottom section of the cloud now, and then the top section is where the actual lightning bolt is going to emerge from. So again, because it's on a really low opacity, we're just building it up very gradually. We can turn the size of the brush up to around 8% and we can just start to generally add a bit more light into this area as well, especially above it. Maybe some other areas here too. Just general texture here. It's going to make a lot more sense once we get the actual lightning bolt in. Again, a little bit of blurring doesn't do any harm. So adjustments, Gaussian blur. Blur it up a little bit, a little bit less this time. We'll just blur it to about 5%. Okay, so we're going to create another layer. And on this layer, we're going to start adding the main feature, which is obviously the lightning. So for this, it may look a little strange initially, but we're going to use this really strong pink color. And we're going to stick with the... In fact, no, we'll change the medium brush this time. So I'm going to turn the brush size down to the lower end of 2%, and I've got the opacity on 100%. And with this pink color, I'm going to go to the brighter section of my cloud, and I'm going to start bringing a wobbly line down. And I'm very deliberately trying to keep it as wobbly as possible. Now I don't want to do too much zigzagging with it because it might look a little bit over the top, but something like that. We definitely don't want it to end up too smooth in places. We need to keep that sense of erratic behavior of it. We need to go to our layer and we need to duplicate that. Go back to the original layer Go to our adjustments, Gaussian blur, affect the whole layer, and we're going to blur it to about 5%. It's not going to be very much at all. We can go to the layer above. We're going to go to our adjustments, the hue, saturation, and brightness. Again, the whole layer. And we're going to turn our brightness up to 100%. Now, the reason I've done that is to create the white, obviously, of the lightning bolt. But then behind it, we have the pink that is slightly blurred out and it creates a really nice halo of color around the white area. Now, if you feel that it's not strong enough, you can go back to that original layer and duplicate it and it will exaggerate it even further. So you're gonna notice it that bit more really already. So I'm quite happy with those two layers. So I'm gonna merge those two together, but I'm gonna change the quality of that layer or the properties. So I'm gonna change it you click on the end from normal and I'm going to put it onto screen. The reason for that is if, if I go behind it with another brighter color now, and I'll demonstrate this, say with a white, and I zoom in and show you this, the white or the pink rather is going to be completely translucent and it won't appear as a dark color over the top of a white color that I put underneath it. If I hadn't have done that and I'd kept it as normal, you would see that the dark pink would go over the top of the white that's gone behind it and it wouldn't really have the right effect. Now, it's not to say that, that screen is the only layer that has that effect, but I think it preserves the majority of what it actually looked like to begin with. It doesn't change it and it's just the best way of doing it that I found anyway. Okay, so we're going to create a, another layer. Well, we already have actually just to demonstrate that, but we're going to put it on top of everything. I'm going to go back to my pink color now I was on the 2%, so I'm going to reduce the size of the brush down, not to the very bottom end of 1% and not at the very top. I'm going to put it somewhere in the middle of that 1%. Again, we're on 100% opacity. And I'm going to begin to place in some more strikes coming from, or some more bolts of lightning emerging from, like branching off from the main piece. We could play around with the colors. We could also do some of them in a blue color. Now they don't all have to be exactly the same color. We could play around with a variety of colors here. I think the two main colors probably will work better if they are the blue for some areas and the pink for other areas. So 
So once you're happy with the overall effect of some of the slightly lesser lightning strikes, we're going to duplicate the layer again, like we did on the earlier stage, go to the back to the original layer, adjustments, Gaussian blur, I'm gonna blur it again to around the 5%. We go back to the layer on top, go to our adjustments, hue, saturation and brightness, again affect the whole layer and turn the brightness up. Now we can change the degree to which we turn it up. We don't have to put it automatically on 100% of brightness. We can dial it back a little bit, maybe to around the 75%, just so it's not quite at the same level as the main strike. We can go back to the layer underneath it, duplicate it, it will exaggerate those colors again. And then something else that really could be quite useful, if we go back to that top layer which has the white on top of the colors, we'll go to the end and we'll turn the opacity down a little bit. Again, it subdues it a little bit more compared to the, the main lightning strike, or lightning bolt rather. So we'll turn it down to around 50% in that area, like so. Now obviously we need to look at the area where the lightning is emerging from. Now it was a layer underneath. I'm going to merge some of these layers together. So these two layers I'm going to merge together. I'm going to merge those two together as well. And I'm going to change the properties to again put it on screen. This means when I go back to this layer underneath that they're going to be more translucent to the effects that I put underneath it. So I'm going back to this fifth layer which had the pink at the top. I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to go for this lighter of the pinks. I'm going to turn the size of the brush up. In fact, we need to go back to the soft airbrush. We'll put it at around 3% and we'll keep it at about 5% opacity. And we need to start just bringing in some texture here, trying to make it really feel like the lightning has emerged from this point. And it's only going to really make sense if it's illuminating the immediate area around where it emerges from the cloud. So I'm going to turn the size of the brush down even more to around 2% really want to create a little bit of an edge to some areas of the cloud. I really want it to be quite dramatic in some areas and pick out maybe an edge of cloud. I'm going to move to our white color and we're going to continue doing the same, especially around this point where it, like I say, it, it completely originates from the cloud in that area. And there's another point here too, so we may as well add another real glowing area of the cloud there. And perhaps here, we'll just keep following it around to any places where we feel like it's emerging from the sky. Maybe one or two where it's not significant enough to feel like it's worth adding white. But we could go back to our other colours like the purple. And we could add some of that perhaps. If you are using the purple however, perhaps turn the opacity up to around 10%. Just so it's a little more visible. So if you feel like some of the actual lightning bolts are competing a little bit, you can always go to them and knock them back a little bit. We can go to our eraser tool, go on the soft airbrush, keep it as standard, turn the opacity down because we don't want to do it too dramatically, it's maybe around 10%. You want to have it quite precise, so we'll keep it around 3% and check we're on the right layer. Find one that you want to just subdue a little bit, so you definitely want it to be there but you don't want it to be quite as impactful. So it's going to be a lot subtler compared to the main ones. And we can just knock it back a little bit. And maybe even more at the end where it begins to trail off. So maybe it could be lighter at the beginning. But then at the end of the lightning bolt, it starts to trail off. So some of this contrast is going to be important, the overall effect. So again, we've got a really strong lightning bolt here. So I'm just going to subdue the end of it a little bit. So it's perhaps disappearing behind another bank of cloud here. So if we're in a really clear area, perhaps it doesn't need to be subdued at all. But if it's starting to emerge behind or go behind clouds, perhaps it needs to be subdued. So I'm going to go to my main lightning bolt here, which was the center one, and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to go to my adjustments. I'm going to go to my bloom. I'm going to experiment with the bloom and lightning. I've got a feeling it will just go straight to very dramatic, which is fine. And we can use this. So I'm going to keep that, but I am also going to blur it out a little bit as well. So we'll go to our Gaussian blur, 
go to the layer properties and we'll just allow that to blur in a little bit, completely blow it out. So it's gonna illuminate all of what we imagine to be the atmosphere around it. So you're not going to see the edge of it. It's not gonna be quite like this because that just makes it completely blurry. We want to spread it further than that. So it illuminates everything in the area. It helps the general believability that it is really emitting a lot of light and having quite a significant impact on everything immediately around it. So that will do for that effect. I might do the same thing for this layer, which would again was the pink layer behind it. So I've gone to that layer. We will not do the bloom effect because that will just make it mainly white, but we'll go to the Gaussian blur again, affect the whole layer. And again, we'll blow it out, perhaps even further this time to around the 40%. And we can always multiply that effect by duplicating it. And if you feel like that's too much, that's intensified it too much, again, on that top layer, you can go to your Gaussian blur, affect the whole layer and spread that out even more. So you're really diluting the impact now. You're kind of diffusing the impact of all these different layers of light spreading out amongst the canvas, but it is definitely having a strong impact. So quite a nice thing to do at this point. If we create another layer on top, we'll put it on the very top of everything is that we can go to our brightest colors or maybe like this blue and we can just carefully with a really small brush at 1%, really quite low opacity, so we'll put it at 10%, we can start to add just slight suggestions that we've got really faint bits of lightning emerging from some of the bolts that are already there. In fact, I'm gonna turn the size of the brush down even further to really quite low on the 1%, but I am gonna put the opacity up a little bit actually. We're gonna put it up to around 50% because otherwise we're in danger of not really seeing it. We can always erase it back a little bit if we decide that it's gone too strong, but we can add just another, a couple of slight effects into our scene. Maybe there's a couple of branches off here. They're not as, anywhere near as strong as the main one that's here. Obviously not as strong as that one, but then this is the second order of brightness. And then you've beyond that got an even fainter branch coming off of that. So if you create them all completely the same level of brightness, then you're not going to get this sense of depth or as variety. It's just going to look a little bit too contrived and won't look natural. So for this layer, I'm going to put it again at, as a screen layer for similar reasons that we went through before. So again, we can also alternate with that bright pink. And we don't need to worry about it going over the top because we have selected the screen layer properties. If we had again had it on normal, again, you would see the dark pink that I'm adding now or the pink that I'm adding. It would appear too dark over the top, but we're just using the screen layer properties so it, it eliminates that concern. Just be careful doubling up the line. You're going to emphasize the brightness a little bit too much, so just be careful with that. I feel like I want to go back to the, the pink that's behind that main lightning bolt, which is here, which is layer six. You can see the difference it makes, especially if I zoom in by reducing it or removing it. You can see the impact it's actually having, but I want to double the impact of that. Really sell that pink warm glow from it now. I also want to go to this layer again, and I want to duplicate that layer. So this is the layer nearer the top that has all the second order of lightning bolts. We're going to duplicate that because I want to exaggerate one or two of those, but I don't want all of them to be quite that bright. So now on the second version of that, I'm going to selectively now erase some of it that I don't want to be there. So we need to be quite precise. So around 3% on the eraser and we'll turn it up to around 50% on the opacity of the eraser. And I just want to make sure that I'm only having the bits that I want to stand out, stand out that bit extra. So you can see I've just, by deselecting it and selecting it again, you can see which bits now that have been made more vibrant compared to how it was before. And some bits are not changing because I've erased parts of that extra layer. Go back to this layer, layer five. I'm gonna go back to my lightest colors. So I'm gonna start with the white, turn the size of the brush up to around 3%. I'm still on the soft airbrush. 
turn the opacity down to around 20% and I'm just going to play around with the white in this area a little bit just really amplify the effect that this this is a really glowing area if I feel like I'm easily going to overdo that which I probably just did then another way of approaching that is to just create another layer on top of that layer so go to that layer create a layer on top use the same white effect that I was just doing same brush settings add it into this area generally and again we can just blur it out and go to the Gaussian blur on the layer properties and blur that out so it is still having the impact but it's not quite as concentrated so I'll show you with and without having that impact if we want to double it up we can duplicate it and we can keep duplicating it if we want to keep amping up that impact but I'm quite happy with how that looks so I'll merge them together I'm going to go back to my colors though I want to add a little bit of vibrancy into the background so I'm going to go to this purple so I'll go back to my layers there's one here that had some purple on it so I've got the brush on around 10% and the opacity on around 10% and I'm going to add a hint of this purple back into this area there's a lot of light going on here from this central lightning bolt so it should be reflecting back from all sorts of atmospheric elements that are in that area okay i hope that's been helpful do check out my other playlists subscribe press the bell notification and i will catch you back here soon see you later